Hi. Hello. Hello. We are Use back. Your Use your hello. fake hello. We are back for another episode of Red and Green, the podcast. Remote. Boy, are... Yeah. I'm sick of this remote business. We are Zooming again. Zoom, Zoom. You know what? I'm lying to say, first of all, that was not a commercial for Mazda. I know people could have been confused because I said Zoom, Zoom. Oh, my goodness sake. <laughs> Nobody thinking that I way. I told you, I'm feeling proggy now today. No, I think, speaking of remote, I'm very thankful for remote because, as many of you folks know, my job is remote. Yep. And today, today, I went back to my old shop. Um, I had a meeting earlier today. Mm-hmm. And then I went by the old shop. And... Like talk to everybody and saw everybody so good, love them. But and you know that moment where you feel a little sad, like man, I miss these guys. I don't mm-hmm. want to be there. Then I drove home. No, I don't. Why? I do love them and I miss them, but I think I would rather miss them at like two o'clock. <laughs> so it's based off of traffic. Than... Pardon? So it's based off of traffic. Yes. Okay. Because it was a nightmare. Mm. It was a nightmare. And I thought, oh, yeah, I hated this. I remember this now. That's mm-hmm. why I wouldn't leave until late. Oh, that makes sense. And I remembered it. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, it was good that I you was get smiling to see. sarcastically at you. Huh? Sometimes I hate that this is not a visual platform because they don't see my sarcastic smiles. And then it just sounds like a weird pause. I got to quit doing that. Unless we go to like YouTube and we like start posting on YouTube. But then that would mean that I'd have to get dressed up, at least from like the waist up. It'd be neat, though. And I want our audience to let us know. I think we need to at some point start doing a live show. You know, I think that'd be like really cool, especially when we travel. And we'll be around a bunch of folk and, you know, people. That'd be nice. Uh And have like a round table discussion and things of that nature. I think that'd be cool. That's what I think. So we'll see. What what do you think? I would love it, but I can't add anything to my plate at this moment. So I can't think about it. It's something to project to. Oh, well, yeah. My dance card's a little full right now, Dr. Redding. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. (laughs) You got something stuck in your teeth? All right, whatever. Okay, whatever. So how was your weekend? How was your week? My week. My week was good. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to think what happened Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Nothing really happened them days. Right. Well, now let me tell you. First of all, Pro tip, if you all need a dress, ladies, well, gentlemen, if you want to, live your best life. Amazon has got an amazing dress, and it's like $30. And I will figure out a way to show you all this dress because, you know, I like to buy clothes on Amazon because I hate going anywhere and I hate trying stuff on. Mm -hmm. And... But boy, you can get some misses. And I really like looking at reviews with pictures. And this Mm -hmm. one had good reviews with good photos. But it slayed when I put it on. And it's a plain black dress. Like, everybody needs that. Right. So, fun fact. I'll try to find a way to post it. But I wore it to your show. You had a big show this weekend. And you were looking beautiful in that dress. With that red coat and those heels, I was like, okay, fire. It was all right. Dang. Yeah, I did a little red thing. My lips were red also, and they were Ruby Woo by Mac, which is like my new favorite red lip color. If you all are my pigment-ish, <laughs> like olive, if you're olive complected, Ruby Woo mm-hmm. is good for you. That was a 
Okay, then that sounds good. Why you give me a look? Of, why you give me a look of disdain? I'm like, cause I can't even relate. Ruby Woo is good for you. What? <laughs> it is. If it, like, listen, let me tell you something. If you get a wrong red on your mouth, it can be awful, awful. Really? Like I have. It'll make your teeth look yellow. Really? If you get the wrong, yes. Yes, sometimes you could look like you got the liver failure if you get the wrong red. Yeah. <laughs> you said the, not liver failure, but the liver failure. All right, Tennessee. I mean, <laughs> listen. Tennessee just walked out. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. The liver but, failure? But who did a fantastic job? You did. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Listen, thank you. Right. I'm, I'm glad you didn't embarrass me. <laughs> what she's talking about is um this weekend um so like what what happened um the Orlando Philharmonic Orchestra uh -huh. um did a huge production of um called something to sing about um the music of Rogers and Hammerstein and so it was it's was part of their Pops two concert series and so they invited. Um, the UCF University Singers and Chamber Choir, and myself to conduct um, the music. They also have some wonderful soloists. Um, they flew in, and um, and the choir and the orchestra, and and actually had um, Oscar Hammerstein's um, grandson Andy Hammerstein do some some narration, and it was one of the most one of the more incredible experiences I've had. Um, and I'm still just kind of reeling from it. So, so I was so, well, so me, proud. I'm sorry. No, I was just gonna say, me as a little girl, and my mama will attest to it. Like the sound of music, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. South Pacific, the King and I. Mm -hmm. uh, those are my big ones. That were like mm -hmm. the ones I was obsessed with. That she just wanted to probably run out into traffic because I would play it on repeat. Yeah. And to it, like, fulfilled every bit of, like, my fourth grade inner little girl <laughs> who wanted. But it took everything I had not to, like, jump and stand up and be like, oh, love. <laughs> oh, my man, the windows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it took everything I had in me. You know, and it's so neat, you know, I, first of all, the singers, my, my um, UCF singers, and those of you who may who may listen to this, I am so incredibly proud of you. You worked so hard and you did so well. I just was just over the moon enjoying watching your excitement and how much you enjoyed the show. So I want to personally say that to um, Chamber Choir and the University of Singers, and I'm just I'm just so proud of you and very fortunate to um, be a director in you know. I thought that was cool. And um, Dr. Kelly Miller, shout out to Dr. Kelly Miller because a lot of things that she did by, backstage was making sure that the students, while, you know, making sure the students were fed and working on different things that she was doing in vocal warm-ups. It was, it was great to, you know, to have to have that dynamic between she and I working together to make this such a great success. And to have my um, cheerleader, my podcast buddy, but also my baby right there beside me, Krista Greenberg. That just it warmed my heart and just you know it was neat. And then to see the UCL faculty as part of the OPO orchestra, you know, it was just yeah, it was just it was just incredible. And then Dr. Mary Palmer out there and cheering on with you know a lot of our other friends and you know playing Mike and it's so many others. So we're very fortunate. And the OPO who was very kind to me and very just, you know, and quick kind Listen. Yeah. That, you were nervous. Yeah. That first time. I've never seen, I've never seen you nervous. Oh, I've been nervous plenty of time in my life now. <laughs> no, yeah. listen, I mean, I, no, like, I know that, I know that you will always, I think it, I think it was you that said mm -hmm. this. Somebody said this, but I think it was you that you're always nervous before you go on, yes. but it, it can be like a fun nervous, like a, like an excitement nervous. Mm -hmm. This looked like, this looked like that if somebody opened an escape door and you could run, 
you would run type of nervous. <laughs> like, um, like this was different nervous than what I've ever seen. Yeah, this on is you. this is true. Now this nervous has been on me before. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but uh-huh. it's like I said, any as I don't know how it is for anyone else that do any kind of performing or presentations or whatever like that. There's um, a healthy form of nervousness kind of keeps you grounded and kind of keeps you locked in. It's when the nervousness kind of gets out of hand and it turns into anxiety, you know, and that's when it's like, <laughs> that one literally. You had anxiety? You. No, no, I didn't have anxiety. I didn't I was, think, like, yeah, I, I felt I was like. Nervous. I was nervous. It was, yeah, it was like, okay, it's one thing. Okay, I knew the music. We were prepared. But that was a big show and it was massive. And it was like, oh my gosh, you know, is this happening? Listen. You, know, you you have to understand though, it's like in my lifetime, a little kid who dreamt of music never thought I would ever be in a position to do that kind of stuff. So dreams do come true, you know. And and every year you can have a different dream. And, you know, and, and and so your bucket, your bucket list can always, you can all, you, as long as you're alive, you can always add to your list, you know, so I and never, delete. and delete, uh, yeah, I never just thought that personally, that on a personal level, I would ever have an opportunity to do something like that, nor would I be at a college that would have opportunity for the singers to, you know, so, yeah. I, I, it was like, okay, can't mess this up. You know, you want the experience to be great for everyone. Oh, not well. First of all, you didn't mess up nothing. Well, thank you. Um, but I'll tell you, when I called, because it took me a minute, you know, I had to get ready and whatnot. But when I got there, I was like, hey, I had to stand in line longer than I thought at the will call. Right. And... So I asked you, like, I was like, hey, so do you have time? Do you want me to come back there? And you're like, no, there's not time. I'm getting ready to go out. Mm-hmm. And I looked at the clock. Mm-hmm. And you always want me to come back there. I was like, oh, right. mm-hmm. I heard it. Like, I heard it in your, you yeah. were laser focused in yeah. that moment. I was like, okay. mm-hmm. I'm not hurt. That's fine. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so it was, I was like, and then when you came out though uh-huh. and where where my part like music professional partner people uh-huh. at mm-hmm. because listen when you nervous my guy that sent me to a whole new I didn't look nervous when I walked out did I did I look nervous when I walked out because I didn't I think I but yeah yeah I don't know I don't know yeah. to be honest with you I don't know like right. Well, I probably would never notice because my eyeballs were shaking because my heart was beating so hard because now. (laughs) Right, 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 right. right. I was like. (gasps) And then there was people talking about you around me. Oh, brother. Let me tell y'all something. All y'all people that listening, I'm going to give you a pro tip. If you want to talk about somebody in a show, do it in your car. You never know who's sitting around you. Mm-hmm. Like you really don't. And luckily, luckily, grandma was fine with what she said because she was <laughs> a grandma. But had she not been, she might have got cut. I'm just saying, I wouldn't, I wouldn't cut a grandma. Wow. <laughs> but no, like that was funny to me though. Mm-hmm. That I'll say what she said in a minute, but that was funny. Right. Um, but it was at the end. Right. When she said what. So, but I will say something that I thought that was very, that really got, like, I did not enjoy the first show until the second half. Uh huh. Why, and why did me and Mike keep calling it? We are so not musicians. Mm-hmm. He's like, so uh, when they were going to their seats, he's like, okay, I'll see you at halftime. <laughs> half, uh, we keep calling it halftime it's a uh, mm-hmm. this is not a football game mm-hmm. but it feels like a football game sometimes right so like when that first half was over mm-hmm. I was like Whew. what's it it's not called the first half either what's it called act one 
act one. Mm-hmm. Uh, when that was over, mm-hmm. I could breathe. Right. Pause the recording. Somebody's laying on their horn outside. Boom. Boom. Okay. So, <laughs> and we're back. They yeah. didn't even know we were on. There you go. So, had someone laying on the horn outside. So, had to handle some business, but we're back. Um, but what I was saying, anyway, Mike, we were talking about halftime. Mm-hmm. Like, when you came out and I saw that those people, like, it stressed me out when the solo people were behind you. Okay. I'm like, how are they going to know what he's saying to do? Like, how are <laughs> he going to know? What if they get crazy? Like, what if they decide to have a Mariah Carey moment and they don't know that, like, it's like, and they, there was moments. Right. Mariah Carey, but you all had code. Mm-hmm. I couldn't take the pressure. What? If you told me, and let's just say that I could sing like a songbird. You can. Okay? I know I can't. You can. That was kind of, oh, I was like, that was just rude. Let me, you can. Can. And let me play this recording, everyone, of her singing. No. <laughs> <laughs> Her face. That that made me mad. <laughs> that's a that's I a, got a, big mad for real. Okay, don't get big mad. We don't want you big mad. We don't want mm. green or the red and green podcast to get big mad. But anyway, no. wait, wait. so anyway, but like if you told me I had to do that for a living, mm-hmm. I would no, thank you. There is not one but you can put me in front of twenty thousand people and tell me to talk. Uh huh. All right. No, sir. Don't have me doing like all of the new. Mm-mm. And you may tell you something else too, though. And all them people could sing lovely. Mm-hmm. Thank goodness. You know what I think is so sad? What? You ever watch American Idol? And there's the people on American Idol and like their family don't love them and tell them that they can't sing. And they let them go. <laughs> I hate that so much. Right. I do. And like when people like there's people on like TikTok and Instagram, and Facebook, like, on the social medias, and, like, they think they can sing, and I do appreciate the fact of, like, your confidence, because I think confidence is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Somebody's down, they can't. <laughs> like, like, that's not the thing, like, like, maybe you need lessons, like, maybe that would help. And for clarity, she's not saying that the people on the show couldn't sing. Everyone on the broad. No, no, no. Show. I, I kind of went down a railroad track. Yeah, on that. yeah. That's it. I, I need to my bring it back up. Sorry, my mind was just going. No, like, but here's the thing. Speaking of those people that sung mm-hmm. at your show, they were like for real Broadway people. Yeah. And their vocals, fantastic. And, like, but that's yeah. what I'm saying. You could tell that they really thoroughly enjoyed what they were doing, and they were doing. They did it fantastically. Mm-hmm. To think I had to do that. I mean, like, what if I drunk a Sprite that day and I got a throat creak? You know, like if you drink too much soda, your throat can creak? What <laughs> no. But he's a throat creak. No. Your throat. Hold on. Your throat. Never you never up. sat there? <laughs> when, I grew, when I grew up, Wait. we didn't talk about throat creaks. <laughs> your throat's never creaked. Never even heard of a throat creak. You're lying. Like when you're sitting there like this and your throat goes. Like it's like right here in this spot. And you it goes. <laughs> nah, can't relate. <laughs> it has. You're I, a human. I can't relate, and I'm so happy that I can't relate. <laughs> your throat has creaked. Oh Lord. Okay. Throat creak. Mm-hmm. It's like it, your throat creaking is like the equivalent of like your throat like having a stomach growl. Okay. We never did the creek. <laughs> you know, coming to think about it, I've never heard your stomach growl. This has always got some food in it. <laughs> 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 that's why. Let me tell you, that's like my worst nightmare. What? I used to hate it when you'd be sitting in church and your stomach would growl. And my daddy, 
like and mine would go like <laughs> it, had, it, it sounded like my stomach sounded like a choir and my daddy my daddy would go like this look hungry they can't see you <laughs> i <laughs> forgot again you said something, look, look, no one this, can see you right this now. This is the thing that sucks about our podcast. I forget that they can't see us and that it ain't just me and you at the kitchen table for real, for real. It's funny though. Anyway, um, but, but. Yeah, so that totally stressed me out, the way that you had all those people. And then, you know, that bar behind the thing that you stand on? Yes. They all be grabbing on it. Is it rocking you? Can you feel them grab it? No, no, no. These are questions I wondered. I mm. wondered, like, are they wiggling him? Mm -mm. I think that would irritate me because I don't like it when people put their foot on my chair. <laughs> I, don't. Listen, I don't. Listen, you're number six. <laughs> like I am so particular. It's like what's wrong? Oh, so that being said, one thing I do want to talk to you about is uh, with the podcast folks. How do you? I think let's discuss how both of us deal with anxiety or or stress. You know what I'm saying? I'm allowed I'm, to I'm from this concert, huh? What I said, mean? I just allow it to consume me. Well, that's a quick answer. Thank you very much. Let me tell you what I do. <laughs> Next week on. Yeah. How do you deal with anxiety? With some healthy ways or, yeah. Well, the first way I deal with it mm -hmm. is with a pill. Okay. Can you explain a pill, please? Because that just don't sound right. Yes. Mm. I take medication mm -hmm. every day for anxiety because... When my daddy ended up in the hospital this summer, mm -hmm. and I literally felt as if I could not function, you and I talked about it, me and my doctor talked about it, and we all agreed that maybe something to help me with it would help. Right. It scared me really bad at first, but I am a firm believer. Talk to your doctor. Have your lab work done. Yeah. Um, because sometimes you need medication. Right. Sometimes you are. I am still crazy anxious. Mm -hmm. But I can now function with it. Yeah. I mean, like, listen, and I don't mean this. Take it however you want to, I guess. But anxiousness is part of my personality. Six. Number six. I honestly. Honestly, mm -hmm. like I desire security. I desire safety. These are things that I search for. So mm -hmm. I'm constantly anxious that something could change. Right. Um. So, yeah, I mean, but that was step one. Mm -hmm. Two, therapy. Right. Three, which I couldn't do the day of the concert. Because it was you. Mm -hmm. But tell your person when you're anxious, even if it's stupid. If right. your person's supportive, if they're not, maybe not. But like, and then four, find a supportive person if, and get rid of the non supportive one. Step four. But <laughs> like, no, really, if in the situation you're so good that you understand my anxiety mm -hmm. and it can be dumb, and I know it's dumb, but I'm feeling anxious over it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just will sit, you don't, if you can fix a problem, you'll fix it. Mm -hmm. But if it's one of the crazy things that I get anxiety over, you'll just sit with me in it until I can work my mind through it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a lot. And like, you never make fun of me for it. Oh, no, no. I mean, we know that I'm anxious over dumb stuff. Like literally at the beginning, before we started recording this Zoom call, I almost busted into tears because he's going to be traveling soon and I had the opportunity to go. But then like, I really shouldn't go because like, it's not that long and it's not like the place isn't great. Right. Like, I, like I've been, not that it's not great. It's just not new. I used to live there. So, you know, it's like, the, and, but then what if I don't go? It's FOMO. I have FOMO like a champ. What does the FOMO mean? Fear of missing out. Oh, okay. And then that gives me anxiety. Really? Yes, because my whole life, my whole life, up until I met you, 
Uh-huh. You've made me do things I never would do. Right. For real. Like, and, you know, like, when Sean died, he died so young. And there were so many things that he wanted to do, he never got to do. Mm-hmm. I want to do things. Right. And my anxiety will give me every reason not to do them. Like one, well, Chrissy, you might not should spend money on a plane ticket to go to New York City because mm-hmm. in 2046, you know, you might have a medical bill. Right. Well, in 2046, I could also be dead and never got to go to New York City. Right. So it, I struggle. Like, I think there's a healthy balance of like, live your life mm-hmm. and plan for the future. You have to do both. Mm-hmm. But I struggle with always thinking the worst and planning a long way to where I ruin my current. Mm hmm planning for a great future when you have to enjoy the current so you can enjoy the future. Yeah. Yeah. If that made sense. No. But when you're on the stage though, and it's me having anxiety for you, mm-hmm. I sit and suffer in a seat by myself. Right. Cause I did not, I will not make that mistake again. I went to the first show, the second show I went with, with Mary Palmer, the first show I went by myself because like if you're performing two shows and there's a way for me to see it, I'm going to see it. Right. Because we've went through that. The whole have your people there for you. But listen, I didn't know those people around me. Obviously, the ones behind me were talking about you. Right. But like not to be able to say I'm freaking out. I should have took Michelle. Yeah. Like, I should have been like, I need you to come to this. She would have wanted to. Yeah, she liked it, but she'd be like, shut up. Quit talking. talking. I'm trying to hear the songs. You're being stupid. He's fine. Like, she would do that. Right, 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 right. I needed her to tell me to shut up and that I was being stupid. Mm -hmm. There's there's tip six. Get your best friend who's mean. (laughs) That helps with your anxiety. I mean, she is a part of the Suicide Squad. The movie, Mm -hmm. the show, not actually the show. But, you know, it's a full couple of things I do, like for performance anxiety. So there's nervousness. One thing I do, I always go and I listen to some gospel music or something like that. I will go in a corner by myself, listen to something that's motivation and insp- inspiring me. Gospel music just does that for me. So I'm there and just thinking about the words, get calming myself, having faith, believing. And that's one thing I usually kind of do to calm it down. Oftentimes, seeing you before, after, or doing it, that calms me also if I have a little nervousness. Just connecting with you, that does something also. Um, you know, it kind of calms me. Um, when it comes to, like, other things, I try to get out of my own head. I do the same things in terms of I don't have to take a pill. Um, but what I try to do is get out of my own head and don't let my own head trash, my own baggage, my own insecurity, or overthink things. Because I realized that only a couple of things that you can control when it comes to situations, your preparation, how you respond to people, apologize if you're wrong, and let things go. Mm-hmm. You, you know, it, 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 it doesn't really benefit, you know, it doesn't really benefit. So I, I try my best to, and then just try to constantly constantly improve and that's that's how i deal with anxiety now when it comes to performance anxiety there's always a, i'm anytime i'm on the podium i'm gonna be a little nervous because it keeps me honest it keeps me locked in you know and it doesn't allow you to become so confident that you make mistakes if i'm going to make a mistake on the podium i never want it to be because of a lack of preparation I want to be just because I made a mistake. You know what I'm saying? And mistakes can happen. Mm-hmm. And I'm okay. I'm okay with that. So I try to, I try my best to work really hard and be prepared as much as I can. Can um, I tell you just now? I thought you were falling. I'm sorry? When you just moved, I literally thought you were falling. And I was like, la, we getting ready to hear a clunk on the podcast. Yeah. Well, let right. me ask you this. Yeah. Because something, a tragedy happened in the second show. What happened? You're conducting 
and your glasses fly off into the violas. Yeah. Did you have a stroke? That why are you so extra? Number six. Of course, I had no stroke. <laughs> I had a stroke. Oh my gosh, did you have a stroke? No. My glasses flew off. That's why they bent now. If you look at my face, they're cricket. So I have to get them fixed. Because though that's why they're cricket now. You just, saw, you just realized that. Yes. I saw you yesterday. I know. But you know, I was wondering what was wrong with my eyesight. Because I said, why did I can't see right? And then I looked in the mirror and I said, oh, Jeff, you better smart as a thumbtack. Your glasses are cricket. So, um, but uh, you have the I, I'm blind. I'm so blind. Would you say? Do you have bifocals? I'm not gonna ever tell no one on the podcast of what I got, but um, I got cricket glasses. So um, but anyway, so my whole point is, I'm blind, and so um, I messed around and couldn't see a thing. I said, "Oh Lord!" <laughs> so you're like, you can't see nothing without your glasses on. I said, "Well," I said, well, "What am I gonna do?" Why are you so yawny? You tired? Am I tired? Yes. Hard. I didn't say tired. I said tired. Orlando, I say tired. Orlando, I say tired. I mean, from Tennessee. Because <laughs> I talk circularly like a biscuit. Okay, whatever that, whatever that means. Because I talk soft. But, so, that's what I was saying. So, those are just different ways that, you know, I try to handle anxiety in a healthy way. Some unhealthy ways I handle unhealthy ways I can handle anxiety is sometimes overeating. You know what I'm saying? And that's not good. That's not good. So I try my best to stay on the um, healthy way of handling anxiety. But I also realize that the more you prepare, the more you, that also lessens anxiety. The more, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and things of that nature. So. And well, for clarity, so here's the thing. This will teach you, like, maybe not teach. I said teach you. That sounded condescending. I don't mean teach no. you per se, but I mean, like, provide a different, whatever you want to say. Right. For me, like, preparation, organization, you're 100% correct. That reduces anxiety, right? Yes. Like, if I, you have travel anxiety, mm-hmm. you make a list, you check the list, you make sure you have your stuff. You take it to the door. You make sure it's ready before you go. Right? You you plan for these things. Right. The reason I take a pill. Here's the difference. Before I started taking the medicine, mm-hmm. I could do all of that. Right. And it didn't affect the travel anxiety. Ah. Uh, it would still be there at 150 percent. But part of the things with you is that it's traumatic. Also. What do you mean? I mean, traumatic things have happened in your life. That I think that because oh, I mean, you have anxiety before that, you know what I'm saying? So I'm wondering, was there something traumatic that triggered it that then causes the pill? You know what I'm saying? I've always been anxious. Okay. But not like I was then. Yeah. Like, like, and I hope you're okay for what I'm hearing to say. You got rear ended yesterday. Right. Praise God, he had his hand on him. He's got a lot of damage on a brand new car, but you're okay, and that's the only thing that matters. Right. Like, all day long today, Mm -hmm. thinking about it makes me get teary. Right. It, like, took my air. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I know what could have happened. One, I work in that career. Yeah, you know about that stuff. I know what can happen. In mm-hmm. that moment, I know the size of the vehicle that hit you. I'm, I've seen other accidents. Mm-hmm. I know what could have happened. Right. And this could be a very different situation that we're sitting in right now. Right. And it's that I have a fear of loss mm-hmm. that I don't think until you've went through what I've went through. you like people grasp exactly mm-hmm. it also keeps me closed off from a lot of people like a lot of those people think i'm mean hey eh, sometimes i am mean sometimes i'm mean but sometimes i just don't want to get close to people anymore right and because one i don't want to get my heart broken mm-hmm. 
Because I'll tell you this, friends will break your heart quicker than any romantic partner. Mm -hmm. Lord, if that, I saw, listen, I want to take credit for that, but I think I read that on Facebook. But listen, (laughs) Facebook facts, preach it. Uh I've been heartbroken by friends more than I would care to even admit to. And but like, here's growth. Here's growth. This past week, somebody who like I loved for years, like there, there's no issue. We have no beef. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no problem. I realized they had deleted me as their friend on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And it broke my heart. Mm-hmm. I have no idea why he did it. Mm-hmm. No one else in his family had done it. Right. And I'm sure maybe he's dealing with something personal. I don't know. But what I do know is this. I have a clean conscience from it. Right. And. But why did I get anxious? Why did I get to where I felt rejected? Mm -hmm. Like I had done something wrong. First of all, people, if somebody deletes you off of Facebook or blocks you on Facebook, here's something here. And listen, I ain't even said this to you. This is brand new information that my medication is working. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But if somebody deletes you or they block you and they don't want to have a conversation with you about the issue, are they worth your tears? Are they worth you being sad over? Because if... He can't come to me and say, hey, I'm feeling this way or there's this or there's that or there's this. I know on my side of the street, it's clean, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if your side of the street's dirty, maybe you need to do some self-reflection. But I'm saying in that situation where it's like, what in the world is going on? Mm -hmm. I feel good about it. Right. Like, that's his stuff. That's not mine. Right. Like, that's his thing. That's not mine. And eventually, and the thing about that, eventually, the way all that stuff works out, eventually y'all gonna see each other yeah yeah and then okay hope he has a great life yeah like and it could be a facebook glitch Mm -hmm. that has happened before too the thing about it is you never going back to one thing that's thought about anxiety is also if you can afford a therapist that's great i got a great therapist and she helps me so much. So I, I forgot to put that two cents in there. But going back to what you were saying is that, you know, oftentimes if that happens, sometimes you just got to let them go, you know, because. Yeah. And which, you know, and sometimes you got to like, sometimes you have to be willing to let folks go without even getting the understanding why. Right. That was that's what I was trying to say. Okay. Like, never you'll never understand why or you'll never know why. And it's okay. It's it ha- the thing about it, it has to be okay. Yeah, and like, you know, there was a girl, I don't know if I've said this on the podcast before, if I am repeat, sorry. But there was this girl who sent me a message one time on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And she said to me. She added me. No, it maybe it's Facebook. I don't know if it's Facebook or Instagram. I don't remember. But this is like five, six years ago. She added me. Well, I had sent her a message. Mm-hmm. And she's from where I used to live before I moved to Florida. And like she was gone, like off my friends. And I sent her a message. I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry that I do something to offend you because in my head, you know, six year ago, Christy was like, I must have hurt her feelings. Mm-hmm. Like, and then something, what did I do? Like, I love this person. What did I do? And I have never had more respect for a human than I did this day. And she helped me more than she ever knows, even though it was hurtful, it was helpful. Mm-hmm. And she said, I'm selfish. She called you selfish? No, oh, she said, I'm going to say it as her. Okay. This is what her message read back to me roughly. Mm-hmm. I'm selfish. I'm sorry. You didn't do anything wrong. You have went through so much. 
And I see that you have such gratitude and joy. And I haven't been through one third of what you have. And I can't find that happiness. When I see your social media post, I feel guilty. Mm. So I deleted you to make myself feel better. Yeah. I'm glad you're happy. I really am. I just wish I was too. Uh, I was going to say it. Yeah. We're friends again, though. Yeah. Like now, like this is after that, like a few years later, we became friends again. Like, and she added me and she's in a better place. Well, people got- and I have to respect that. Like it was very raw and very honest. And you've got a right to do that. I would just kind of like say, hey, like if you're looking at somebody and you're having like envy or jealousy and it's giving you anxiety or making you feel sad and you feel, well, first of all, Facebook got smarter and they made an unfollow so you don't see their crap in your feed. Mm -hmm. So there's a pro tip. But if or if they annoy you with political posts, you can hit unfollow too, Mm -hmm. which is my favorite use of that button. Mm hmm. But like on social media, like Instagram, stuff like that, if it's something, send them a message and just say, hey, I'm going through something right now and this is nothing about you. I'm so mm-hmm. proud of everything that you have. I feel like I don't have. Mm-hmm. And I need to work on me or maybe delete the social media completely. Right. You know, like, right. because I tell you what, social media can give you anxiety too. Hmm. That's why I don't even try to, I try my best not to even get caught up on that stuff. Let, let me, let me tell y'all what Jeff Redding is on social media. He is a real and what is it on Instagram? Is it reels? I don't know. He he will send me the dumbest videos. You send me some dumb videos and They're kill funny. yourself. Like, uh-huh. They funny. Like, he ain't going to see that you had a baby. But he's sure gonna send me a goat stuck in a pig food trough <laughs> with somebody like running, chasing after him in the snow, and mm-hmm. put like forty-seven laughing, crying faces. Mm-hmm. That's what you're on social media for. I mean, really, I he uses know. social media like or like Facebook and Instagram like Vine. <laughs> it's fun of him, and I move on. Yeah. No, I think it's funny, but it's but anxiety. You know, you always have to find a way to get to a healthy spot and how to deal with your anxiety and just move forward, you know, because it's, you know, it can it can be tough, you know, and just and it's OK. It's 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 OK. Having anxiety is not the end of the world. It's just really trying to get coping skills. How do I get past this? How can I? you know, get to the other side, which is very, very important. Yeah, I mean, I think you're right, like, about all that. You know, I think, you know, we've talked about the Enneagram thing so much. Uh Uh-huh. I kind of just want to touch on it for a second. It's funny that, like, if you sit back and think about what you talked about and the things that give you anxiety, Mm -hmm. it's you trying to serve people. And make sure other people are okay and yep. helping other people. And for me, it's security and that everything will be okay in the future. It's funny. Yeah. And it's it's funny. You you oftentimes live out your number two or your whatever your number is. But then I look at some of the unhealthy stuff of that also. And then you look at some ways, then oftentimes you may try to get approval from people who will never approve you. That's you. Yeah. Sometimes like that's a, and when I say that's you, I don't mean that's Jeff no. exactly. I mean no. that's a two though. No, yeah, that's a me. Yeah, there are some folks that will never approve of you, regardless of how hard you try or what you try. So you have to also, in being a helper, understand that you're helping people. But you know, but there's some things don't allow it to become something that's unhealthy for you. Because you're seeking approval for people, for some folks who are never a, a person or, you know what I'm saying, that would never approve you. Um, I didn't go through that. I didn't feel like it. I did not feel that way this weekend. But I can also see how you could sometimes, you know, how yeah, I, you know, I, think... I, constantly, I constantly say, wait a minute. If this person or that person or that doesn't like you, why are you trying to get approval? What is it? And so, does it make sense to you? So, 
my number two was always making sure that everyone's in a good place and everyone's happy. But at the same time, make sure that you're not trying to get someone's approval because that's not what it's about. Well, and I'll say this as your special friend, as I was called this week. Oh my gosh, you did. Tell, tell the people what they did, please. People came up to me and, and tell like, what the lady said. And then you said, oh, and then you, gotta, then you will, back. I will. Give me one minute, Jeffrey. I just you give me a lot of instruction now. Well, I need bullet points. <laughs> Only gave you two, good. First one. Mm-hmm. That was first one. Um, what was the first one you want me to give? You talk about the lady or somebody? I forgot. I'm getting old. Um, what is y'all just yawning all through the podcast like a grandpa? I said I was getting old. Yeah. Um, what was the first one I said? You was about to say something. Oh man. Why are we this way? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No. What I was gonna say. I'll start here. Let me start here with what I was gonna say. Um, you are a person. I, I think it's human nature that we all seek approval of people. Uh-huh. Like we all, nobody wakes up and says, I want to see who I can find that can hate me today. Mm-hmm. I mean, you might, but then you're a sociopath and you need to go to a therapist. Like, right. So, but like normal people, it's not even necessarily people pleasing. If it's even just going with the flow, like you mm-hmm. kind of like, you just want to exist and not make waves. And then there's people pleasers. I think I'm a people pleaser. Like I really like rules. I like abiding by rules. I like guidelines. I like direction because I feel like I can be successful and not cause problems if I have those things in place. So like, like I really, Jacoby today was writing a paper and he had a lowercase I, which should have been a capital I because he was referring to himself. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, it doesn't matter. This is what he said. Oh, made my brain blow up. He goes, it doesn't even matter. Like, this is just me talking to my teacher in like a message. Mm-mm. It's not for a grade. It's not about a grade, son. It's the it's right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. You write it correctly. You're writing to an adult, and that's proper English. And so that's what we're doing. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So he's like, okay. And he basically was like, relax. I was just saying I wasn't getting graded. Relax, number six. <laughs> like, literally, like, hello, anal retentive mommy. Yes. So. Okay. <laughs> and it's here she is. But, you know, like, those things make me feel, what do rules do? They make me feel safe and secure. I know exactly right. what I'm supposed to do and how I'm supposed to do it. You are a people pleaser. You want people to like you. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Now, the difference between me and you, once I realize that somebody is a jerk face, I will make it my personal goal to make your life miserable. This is true. You will still try to do things and change your ways to make them like you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And again, there's nothing wrong with, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let me tell you something that I think is funny about you and like almost everyone else that I know, but I just don't have this in me. Y'all will hate people. I don't want to say hate for real, for real. Yeah, no. Because that's a strong word. Mm-hmm. And there's only like two people I hate. And I got five people on the list that could murder me, but there's only two that I hate. Mm-hmm. So like, listen, the Lord forgives, so do I. But I still think you could kill me. Um, mm-hmm. But you are very, how do I want to say it? Like, There'll be people that you don't like whatsoever. And you will still care if they like you or not. Because I still want to be able to have a health relationship. And also I look at the greater good and often oftentimes I try to look at the greater good of, you know, partnerships and things of that nature. Yeah, I don't. I know you don't, and I'm getting he's so silly, which is actually <laughs> actually is very healthy on your end. It's unhealthy on my end. 
I'm getting better at it. And that's one thing that my therapist is really helping me, you know, through. It's like, now I'm getting a lot better at that. So I'm like, okay. You know, it is. Tell me, it, let me tell you. Be, hold on. Because I think part of it has always been with me, the misunder being so misunderstood, you know, people misunderstanding me or have opinions of, about me that are completely wrong. And then you try hard to show them who you really are. And it just reinforces what they think of you. <laughs> and you got to let that thing go and move on. That's, but like, that's, and that's, that's the it for me. And I've gotten so much better in the book. But now, here's the thing. And I got to give you credit where credit is due. Like for real. And this is not me praising you. And it's not because you're my boo. Like right. literally I feel guilty about this daily and I can only tell the truth. And the reason I tell the truth on this mm -hmm. Because it's not very respectful to you. And I never mean it disrespectful. But right. when you talk about being a servant, I literally thought you were full of crap. When you talked about the reason that you did things, I really, because listen, it sounded so good. Mm -hmm. I didn't believe you because I'm a jaded hag. That's who I am as a person. I'm a mean old jaded hag. <laughs> but, but when I found that you actually, like, not only do you mean it, you live it. The thing that you got to understand is that what you said just now, there's a lot of people that felt that way. And but you understand the way I grew up and the things that I've seen that I saw growing up and being there for my mom or being there for this or being there for, you know what I'm saying? And with my brothers and, and so, and that in the single parent home, you can't help but be a helper. You, you, you play a part in the family unit that way. It's how I'm wired. Um, that's why I could never understand. That's why it's hard for me to understand certain things with certain people, you know what I'm saying? I just can't relate to it. Um, that being said, when the amount of hatred that I have faced in my life because of the, either the color of my skin, um, the success in my profession, the failures in my life, the ups and downs, and all, all of it. And there are certain things I just... And then the more you try to, you know, to prove or to show, the more you realize it's unhealthy. And at the end of the day, you just got to learn to be you for the, be the best version of you for you and <laughs> for you. And when you do that, the people who are supposed to see who you are will see, even the people who can see who you are, but they're so jaded, they won't say nothing to you about it and they'll hold on to whatever, but they know they're wrong. You still have to let it go, and you can't. You can't always worry. That's what you. You cannot worry about that. It's taken me a long time to realize that, and and I've had some very dear friends in my life who even told me that she's been years ago. You know what I'm saying? And but until you go through it yourself, you know, and you tell me that all the time, you know what I'm saying. So I look at you and I admire your you know, hmm, whatever, don't matter, you know, for me, I'm getting there because you'll go through that with, you can go through that in your pro pro professional life, um, with teaching your or community, you know, out there in the community, doing choirs, you know, doing speaking and you can't, you can't just, <laughs> you can't focus on the naysayers. You got to focus on the people you got to focus on why you're doing what you're doing and making sure that you're doing the best that you can do. That's all you can do. You know, criticism is healthy. Healthy criticism is always good. Healthy criticism that'll make you grow, that'll make you, you know what I'm saying? That it is the unhealthy stuff that you have to remove yourself from, you know, because no one's perfect. Well, like I love the way, well, I'm confrontational. A lot of the time. I'm not because if I if I become confrontational, child, please, it won't no, go. No, <laughs> I don't I don't I'm mean not. like confrontational, like mm -mm. Yeah, because I know let, let me walk away. <laughs> let, me. Well, let me tell you, mm -hmm. my boss, mm -hmm. he's so great. Like he's funny. 
And homie's confrontational. <laughs> uh huh. Yes, but he he's not. Con- he it's delivery. We talk about delivery. Yeah. With I told him I'm like, bro. I almost said his name. Ooh. Um, I was like, it's tone. It's your tone, my guy. Like, I was in customer service. Like, my job was to be friendly for so many years. And y'all hear that, like, I'm jaded and mean. But boy, put me on Broadway and give my regards to it. Wow. And, but one of the things that I think that was like, when I'm working and Listen, Jeff just went panic. I just totally paused because he went panic because he almost has a dead computer and he's the one recording <laughs> the thing. And he was like, he did the hand signal of like, keep it going, keep it going. Bro, you should have just like started wiggling around. I just thought it your normal wiggle. But like oh, now no. you stressed me out and I didn't even know what I was saying. Ugh, no, I'm just I- looking and I'm looking at my computer like, oh no, it's not, I'm not plugged in. Whoa, Nelly. <laughs> so anyway. Chris said, oh, nobody knows his last name. Christy said, Christy mm-hmm. said, what? yeah, but we talk, we talk about tone and like, he is a confrontational person, which I like. Right. For work. Cause he's like, and he means, he does mean, he's the nicest, kindest guy. He really is so kind. And then there's people who thinks he's not so kind right. because he will say this, you did that wrong. Mm-hmm. And I literally was telling him when I said I talked around like a biscuit earlier, I was telling him today, I was like, you just talk like a triangle. Right. That's why people come back at you. I talk round like a biscuit. You talk like a triangle. People <laughs> react better to me because I'll be like, honey, you know what you did? You didn't do X, Y, and Z. And he's like, you did it wrong. <laughs> we literally are saying the same thing. Uh huh. It's just the delivery of it. Right. Right. You where you are and your heart is in the right place. And what I want to say to that is this, and I hate saying I thought it was crap and I thought it was crap because I'm jaded. Mm -hmm. Like I've dealt with other educators Mm -hmm. and let's be frank. The, when I first met you, you were a teacher and you gave a speech. Well, congratulations. Mm-hmm. I thought it was to get me as a parent on your side and you were going to be garbage like some of the other ones I've met. I've had about in my children's career, mm-hmm. I've had some absolutely outstanding teachers that have changed their lives. Mm-hmm. And some of them I should be sending a therapy bill to. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's the God's honest truth. Um, and administration, if we're going to just keep going. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. That was for my soul. I needed that. Well, since you went to a dark place, mm-hmm. I like there's some anger there that I haven't worked. Through. Yeah. But what does Jeff do? He gives benefit of the doubt to everyone. But I told my mom this. I swear to you, today I told my mom this. I said to you, mm-hmm. I'm telling my mom this story. Mm-hmm. I'm now going to tell it to the podcast people. I said to you, I'm hungry. And so I'm working at one end of a table. You're working at the other end of the table. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those days when you came over and we should have had a date, but instead of having a date, we worked and Mm -hmm. did homework. Right. And you said, well, we got, and you got up and you're like, well, it looks like you went to the grocery store. You got this, you got this, you started roll calling. And I go, because I'm trying to be skinny, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's things coming up. I want dresses. I want to lose some pounds. It's like quitting carbs. Mm-hmm. Don't be a fatty bow batty girl. And I was like, Ugh, I want all of that. Mm-hmm. But I really should just have protein. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm writing a paper for school. This man browns a pound of ground beef and gives it to me in a bowl. Mm-hmm. And I got tickled. Did you or did you not give me a pound of ground beef in a bowl? It wasn't a pound. But I gave you some ground beef in a bowl. I did not it give was, you a pound of ground beef. That's I a bet lot. it was a pound. It was a bowl. It was a bowl of pound. It was no ground. It was a what? Good. It was a lot. You, you are so extra. Number six. Go ahead. It <laughs> was, that is not number six. A pound of ground beef. What? <laughs> it was a lot. Okay. It was. I 
telling you it was a pound for real. Anyway, go ahead. I'm gonna hit. Uh huh. I'm listening. Chris, that's not judgment. No, it's I'm not. So judgment. listen, hear me though. No, for real. I'm uh-huh. so grateful. Did you eat it? Over the course of 14 days, but yeah. <laughs> like, okay. No, but like, no. Here's the. But here's the thing. And listen, pro tip, pro tip for people out there too that's listening. I t- mommy goes, well, that was sweet of him. Because mm-hmm. my mama loves her some Jeff. Like she loves him. She watched the video, you tripping on your shoes. I mm-hmm. saved it, y'all. Mm-hmm. So if y'all, if you ain't seen the video, go to Instagram, go through one of the reels. It's funny. He trip. he bought new shoes and everybody's had that where they got like a weird pair of shoes and they cause you to trip. Mom said that she has a pair of sketchers and they don't trip her anywhere. So she said not to throw them shoes away. Mommy said, <laughs> just right. don't wear them in the mall. Because I was getting mad. Like uh-huh. <laughs> that was you were so precious. It was funny. But like you, I will never take your kind things for granted. Even if I didn't want 400 pounds of ground beef. Mm-hmm. I was thinking like, nah, I should eat like a chicken and some green beans. You were taking care of me and serving me. I didn't even realize you were up and doing it, but I, I said, I'm hungry. You got me food. You have always gotten me what I need. Not every time is it the way I thought it would be, right? Mm-hmm. I said, I'm hungry. You gave me options. I shot them all down. I said, I need protein. You found protein. You made it and gave it to me. And it was good, actually. I'm like, you know how to season and cook some meat. But, like, never been given a bowl of ground beef before. <laughs> I also ate it, and you knew my body needed it, and you were trying to be respectful of what I was trying to do and eat. But also, like... I've said, I want to eat that cake. And you'll be like, you get that cake and you just eat it. You can cheer me on if I eat cake. And I'm like, I'm trying to lose weight. It's fine today. Just watch it later. If that's what you want to do. You're very. I don't have it. What you have. <laughs> like, well, like, I'm working though. on it. I really, I want to be you. Like in this way, I want to be this. I want to make you feel the way you make me feel. I want to make my kids feel the way you make me feel. Mm-hmm. That got so much deeper than I intended for this to go. I noticed. As she pauses. Honestly. My mind it don't jiggle, jiggle. Ooh. It falls and then look, thank you for the joke. So, you know, that does help. That helps. Thank you. Riding in my feet. Um, Didn't want to be when I don't, I never feel like it's a chore with you. You do things that I need and I don't know I need them. You do things I ask for, but I never even realize I asked for it. And you keep me in a place where I'm not scared. And I have never felt so safe and protected by a person. Well, the, well, the thing can vice versa. I've never felt so protected and loyal. You know, I've never felt you're deadly loyal. Deadly. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's Number six, yeah. You're number six. You tell me when I'm wrong, but you don't, you know, own your stuff. You don't let nobody put nothing on me that's not mine. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then you call people out for their mess. You know. Yeah, I mean, like, I like really? we, all, we all make mistakes. Mm-hmm. I'll never be mad at anybody for making a mistake. Mm-hmm. It's the way that you react to the mistake you made. Yeah. And like, my mama used to always say to me, what's done in the dark will come to the light. Mm-hmm. Which is true. 
I'm just standing in the line. Like when you do that, you feel better. Right. Like you are a very easy person to stand with because it ain't hard to stand with somebody when that person's carrying you. Mm -hmm. And you've carried me a lot. Well, there's a saying, and I forgot who wrote it, who said it. I just put it up. He said, obviously, you can't do wrong right. You need to learn how to do right right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot who said that. Callie, I want to give credit to us because I didn't come up with it. You can't do wrong right. You need to learn how to do right right. <laughs> I mean, if that ain't the truth. Jeez, this is ouch. Okay. Well, and and but that's the thing. Like we all still learning, and I, if you ain't learning, then you're dead. Yeah. And you know, there's like there's jokes, and this like they're on TikTok and Facebook. We've all seen them. Like if you have social media, I'm sure. But it's like that thing of like, you know, when I'm with my person, I don't have to think. Blah blah. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, I've traveled with you. Right. Y'all, when the second that we hit our butts in the seat mm -hmm. of the airport, like at the gate, my mind says, bye. Mm -hmm. And I'm on autopilot. He says, jump. I say, how high? He says, let's go. I say, let's go. Before all of this, you always say, is there something you want to do? Is there something you want to see? Have you looked it up? What do you want to do? Let's see if we can work whatever it is that you want to do into it. Mm -hmm. normally I know nothing because like I've been in survival mode for 20 years so like hey I want this okay great he will say get up you need to put on tennis shoes today tennis shoes you need two coats and earmuffs and guess what I do do I question it no nope. I'm at that point with you mm -hmm. I can be on autopilot right you tell me what to do. Like, I will be your co-pilot. You tell me when I got to come to. <laughs> like, focus. But such a beautiful place to be. Like, oh, I love you. Thank you. This was, we were supposed to talk about anxiety, and it made me want to hug you, and now we're on the Zoom. Mm. Well, on that note... <laughs> We're really cute. It's Red and Green, the podcast. But please don't, don't, don't wait. Don't forget to rate, rate. What did I say? You, you didn't say any of that. Oh, no. This is... Listen, rate, review. Give us five stars if you can. Um, Follow us on Instagram, Red and Green Colorblind. Yeah, that's all. Read the show notes. If there's anything else, I'll put it there. All right. Thank you. We'll see you soon on Red and Green. The podcast. The cast of the pod. The podcast. Yeah.